What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily, and in this video, we are checking out the new Samsung Galaxy S20 FE 5G. Yes, that is quite the name, but this is quite the device. It is essentially a slightly less premium version of the flagship S20, with still a ton of great features and specs. It comes in a whole bunch of fun new colors, and most importantly, it is significantly cheaper. I personally think this this S20 FE or Fan Edition is the best smartphone Samsung has launched so far this year. I think it's going to appeal to a lot of people and I'm really excited to check it out. So I won't waste any more time, let's just go ahead and unbox this thing and see what the S20 FE has to offer. Now as I go through the box here, the first thing I want to mention is the price. While the flagship S20 sells for $999, the S20 FE comes in at $699. But actually, Samsung and Best Buy and Amazon are all running sort of an introductory deal where you can get this phone for $599. That's what I bought mine for, and I'll leave some links down below in the video description so you can maybe snag that deal too if it's still available for you. Pulling off the lid of the box, the first thing we get of course is the S20 FE itself. You can see I got mine in this really nice mint green color, and this phone is also available in navy blue, lavender red, white, and orange. So like I said, tons of color options to choose from. Digging a little deeper inside the package, unfortunately we don't get too much else actually. Just the included wall plug and USB-C cable, but interestingly enough, this phone ships with the smallest USB wall adapter, even though it does support up to 25 watt fast charging. So keep that in mind, you can utilize this phone with a much more powerful Samsung brick if you have one. But aside from the charger and some additional paperwork, that's all you get with this phone. With all that stuff out of the way, once again, here is the S20 FE. And right off the bat, I have to say, I think this is a really good looking device. It obviously looks pretty similar to the flagship S20, but let's go ahead and talk about some of the things that make this phone a little different. For starters, this is a 6.5 inch device. So it's a little larger actually than the regular S20, at least by height mostly, but that means you're getting a whole lot of screen to work with. It feels relatively comfortable in the hand and obviously with a great screen to body ratio and really minimal bezels all around, there's not a whole lot of extra bulk in the way. It's a very modern, very premium looking device. And if you're curious, size wise, here is how this phone stacks up against the A51 and the A71. It actually falls sort of in the middle. It's a bit slimmer width wise than both other phones, but all in all the FE is similarly sized to the two larger A-series devices. You might also notice that this S20 FE has a flat panel display, no curved glass edge or sloping front screen here. And I know some people might actually consider that a positive, so I just thought I'd point that out. Around back, the FE has a plastic rear cover. Samsung calls it glastic like they always do. It's a matte finish that's made to sort of mimic frosted glass, even though it's not. And it is essentially the same sort of material and finish that we got on the flagship Note 20. The frame is all metal with a polished finish and a contrasting color, so the phone still has some weight to it, and it certainly feels sturdy all around. It looks nice too. Honestly, Samsung is just all over the place with materials right now, so I can't really complain one way or another, especially since this phone doesn't actually have any compromises on features. It offers wireless charging, reverse wireless charging via PowerShare, and it's IP68 water and dust resistant. So plastic back aside, you don't miss out on anything else. Taking a look around at the rest of the device, the left side has nothing going on, but the right side has, of course, the usual power button and volume buttons. Up top, there's the SIM and SD card tray, so we do get expandable storage here. And down below, there's the USB-C charging port, obviously, and the speaker. And this phone does have dual stereo speakers with the additional one in the earpiece. Around back, the S20 FE has a triple camera setup, which I'll talk about in a bit. And if you're curious, that camera bump is much more subtle than some other devices we've seen, which is nice. Underneath the front display, there's the fingerprint 
second reader, which just in my initial tests here seems very fast. It's definitely on par with the flagship S20 and significantly faster than what we get on the A series phones. And of course, there's also face unlock too, which feels quite fast as well. Okay, so let's talk specs since I think this is really what people want to know about. First off, the six and a half inch screen is a 2400 by 1080 Super AMOLED panel packing in 407 pixels per inch. On one hand, it's covered in Gorilla Glass 3, so it's not really as durable as the newer flagship phones with that new updated Gorilla Glass. But the big thing you do get here is the super smooth, high refresh rate, 120 hertz option. And on a phone like this, I think that's really awesome. Personally, I would much rather have a 120 hertz refresh rate over QHD resolution, and that's exactly what we get here. And if you haven't yet tried a phone with a high refresh rate display, I think it really is quite the experience. The phone just feels so fast, it's so smooth and snappy, and I think with this device here, along with like the OnePlus Nord, for example, and a couple others in its price range, this is really gonna set the stage for a vast majority of other new devices next year to all offer this super high refresh rate option. Couple that with a beautiful AMOLED panel that supports up to HDR10+, and you've got yourself a fantastic viewing experience from top to bottom. Inside, the S20 FE also packs basically flagship internals. You get the Snapdragon 865 chipset paired with the Adreno 650 GPU, either six or eight gigabytes of RAM, and UFS 3.1 storage. Yes, you can still get more RAM in the actual flagship S20 if you want, but besides that minor little comparison, there's really nothing else to complain about. You're getting nearly the same specs that some people paid $1,000 or more for just six or seven months ago, but now for considerably less money. And looking ahead, these kinds of specs, in my opinion, make this phone a good long-term investment. I was honestly kind of surprised Samsung went all in with the internals here. That was absolutely the right move, and it positions this phone as likely the best all-around value Samsung device on the market right now. The phone, in my opinion, really has no compromises, and I think even power users and heavy gamers will appreciate what all this phone does have to offer. And by the way, the S20 FE even has a slightly larger battery than the flagship S20. This phone gets a 4,500 milliamp capacity, while the flagship S20 had a 4,000 milliamp capacity. That's not really a huge difference, I realize that, and the increase in screen size, for example, might even things out a little bit. But still, bigger is usually better, so it's kind of nice to see. The cheap little included wall plug, like I mentioned earlier, is a bit insulting, but I can look past that since everything else that's going on with this phone is so great. Finally, let's talk about those cameras. And with this, there's really two important things to mention. First off, the selfie camera up front is better than the flagship S20s. This phone has a 32 megapixel shooter up front, while the flagship S20 had just a 10 megapixel selfie lens. Around back though, while the main lens and ultra wide lens are seemingly the same 12 megapixel setups from the flagship phone, the thing that gets downgraded is the telephoto lens. The FE has just an eight megapixel zoom lens, and while yes, you still get the fun 30 times zoom, it isn't quite as good as the flagship phones. Honestly though, I don't really mind that because you get everything else and I don't really use the heavy zoom anyway. The full suite of shooting modes is here, including 4K 60fps video with the front and rear cameras, and in my brief time using this device, image quality looks really stellar. I'm looking forward to putting it to the test against the flagship S20 just to sort of see the results, but I'd suspect it should be as good if not completely identical in the end, which again is awesome considering you get a nearly flagship camera setup for considerably less money. All in all, if you couldn't tell already, I'm a big fan of this S20 fan edition. I think this phone is going to be super popular, especially here in the US, as it should be. It's priced right, but in cutting the cost, Samsung didn't really compromise on much, if anything. I'm looking forward to putting this phone through its paces in the coming days, but my initial thoughts are simply that I think this is absolutely going to be the Samsung phone to buy now for a vast majority of people. It's likely going to be a really fantastic investment. But what do you guys think about this new S20 Fan Edition? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, of course. 
But hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys later.